I have made a couple of clock projects in the past. I have always used DS1302 RTC module to do it. I received a backlash from my viewers. They question why would I use this particular RTC module, labeling it as not reliable. Now that I think of it, I had issues with those RTC modules being off by a minute or two after operating for a week. Everyone pointed to DS3231 as a much more precise RTC module. I thought to myself, I have to give it a try. Video about just RTC module would be a bit boring. There is nothing eye-catching in showing the project result in serial monitor, but if I add a pinch of I2C connectivity to it and a pinch of OLED graphics, we should end up with a recipe for a fairly interesting and engaging video. Let's begin. The DS3231 module is a low-cost, extremely accurate I2C real-time clock with the integrated temperature sensor. The device has a battery input and maintains accurate timekeeping when main power to the device is interrupted. Finally, the project with the connectivity is super simple. To connect this RTC module to Arduino, we need to connect VCC pin to Arduino 5 volts, ground to ground, and then SDA pin to Arduino analog pin A4, and SCL pin to Arduino analog A5. We have to use exactly those pins as they are meant for I2C communication. And this is pretty much it. Before we look at the code, we need to import the DS3231 library. There are a few of them available on GitHub, but I think this is the best one. It's created by my fellow countrymen. So to get it in, as usual, you need to download the zip file, then open the zip file in Arduino IDE. With each library come some example sketches, and this one is no different. As you can see, there are a few of them. Let's open one of the examples. In the code you can see the references to author's website. I give it a well-deserved thumbs up. Now to the code. Let's create the simplest sketch to display date and time in the most basic format. We start with declaring the libraries. First one enables us to use I2C communication and the second one is the one we just installed, which will help us with controlling the RTC module. Then we declare the RTC module and also we declare the RTC datetime object. It consists of following components that are needed to read the date and time. In setup function we open serial output to be able to see the sketch results and then we initiate the RTC module. And finally we set up the current time to the time the sketch was compiled at. That is a very handful functionality which makes setting up current time on the RTC very easy. In the main loop we run getDateTime method to read current date and time to the DT object we have previously defined. And then with print function we output the time to the serial monitor. As you can see the format is very basic. You do not see leading zeros where they should be. So if you want to output date and time in other way there will still be some string operations required. And here is where this library blew me away. It provides date format method, which provides super easy way to construct different formats to display current date and time. Let's look at the output of date and time from our previous sketch. Very basic format, no leading zeros. So we are looking at the Friday 21st of January 2021, past 10 o'clock in the evening. When executing date format method, we pass a string to it. This string contains a kind of a script of the desired format. You have a set of symbols which would help you to build that script. We need symbols for all key, date and time components. Let's go through them one by one. So you have lowercase d that would display the day of the month, lowercase m that would display the month, lowercase y for last two digits of the year, lowercase h for hours in 12 hour mode and then minutes and seconds. You can see the output value for each symbol for our sample timestamp. Please pay attention to the fact that this method takes care of leading zeros and you don't have to worry about it anymore. But this is not all. 
we continue with capital D that gives you short name of the day of the week, capital M that gives you short name of the month, capital Y that gives you a full year, capital H that gives you hours in 24 hour mode. Still not done yet. JS would give us day as an ordinal number, capital F would give us full name of the month, L would give us full name of the day of the week. And also few extra ones like A which would give us AM or PM, Z which would give us which day of the year it is and T would show us number of days in the current month. Using those symbols as building blocks you can build the short scripts that can then be passed to the date format function. Let's run a few examples for our sample timestamp. Here is the symbol reference to help us. I created a sketch for those examples so we will double check if the commands we created produce the desired format in the serial monitor. We start with a basic format but quite different from the one previously used. And here is the command to get this format and the serial monitor output. Let's check three other examples. Fantastic, the output was showing current time, but all four formats matched. Now that we know how to control this type of RTC module and know how to format date and time readings, let's move away from a serial monitor and try to display it on a small OLED display. When I wanted to connect it to Arduino, I realized it also needs to be connected via pins A4 and A5, as this OLED display is also I2C device. So what now? Those pins are already taken. You have to realize that those pins are not dedicated to any particular device. They can be shared across many devices as they connect those devices to I2C bus. So for starters, let's connect VCC and ground or the OLED display to Arduino. Then let's envisage the I2C bus with a serial data line called SDA in short and serial clock line called SCL. Arduino is connected to that bus via analog pin A4 to SDA and via analog pin A5 to SCL. Microcontroller is a master device. The way of connecting to I2C bus may differ depending on which Arduino board you use. E.g. in Arduino Uno, A4 and A5 pins would work, but there are also dedicated I2C ports. In Arduino Mega, on the other hand, A4 and A5 cannot be used for that purpose. So check the documentation of the board you are planning to use. Now we can connect the RTC module to the bus as a slave and OLED display in the same way as a second slave device. Ok, but how would Arduino recognize which device is which to communicate with it? Each device has its own unique address. So DS3231 RTC module should be available at address 68 hex. OLED display should be available at address 3C hex. If however you come across issues while connecting any of those components, you can use I2C scanner sketch to detect all available devices connected to the bus and their addresses. Here is a URL where you can find I2C scanner sketch. Paste it to Arduino IDE and execute it. For my little setup, the I2C scanner detects following devices. Funny enough, it shows three devices. The third one is the EEPROM memory that is built in in the RTC module. We are not going to use it in this video. So let's connect the real thing. As mentioned, we connect ground pins of both OLED display and RTC to Arduino ground and then do the same for VCC pins, connecting them to Arduino 5 volts. Then with white jumper wires we connect analog pin A4 to SDA pin of RTC module and then to SDA pin of OLED display, making it a serial data line of I2C bus. Then with red jumper wires we connect analog pin A5 to ACL pin of RTC module and then to ACL pin of OLED display, making it a clock serial line of I2C bus. So what changes do we need to make to our original sketch to be able to display time on OLED display? We require two more libraries for controlling the display. Then we define its dimensions and declare the display itself. In setup function we add a section which checks if the display properly initialized. It holds sketch execution if display is not detected. 
Now let's look at the code or the main loop to transform reading from the RTC module to graphical representation of date and time. First we save the reading from the RTC to the DT object. Then we draw three rectangulars, first in white. It shows yellow as this particular display is dual color. The first 15 lines are yellow and then the rest of the display is blue. Then we draw another one in black and then another one in white again. After selecting cursor position, font color and size, we output full day of the week in the top panel using date format function. We continue with displaying short name of the month, day of the month and the full year in the middle panel. In main panel we display hours and minutes and then with a small font we also display seconds. As you can see for all components of date and time I used date format function. So let's load the sketch to the board and see the result. Not good, nothing happens. There is nothing displaying on the OLED display and in the serial monitor we see following error. Basically Arduino Nano does not have enough memory to handle my code and the code of both OLED and RTC libraries together. I actually could pin this problem to any execution of date format function. When this function is not executed, both components initialize OK. We would have the same problem for Arduino Uno as it has the same amount of memory. So this is a disaster as I need to start anew. I need to write a bunch of functions that will allow me to parse the data from the DT object into desired formats I need to show on the OLED display. First function is the day of the week. It will convert the day of the week reading into full name of the day. Second function is day, month, year. This one would convert day, month and year into string meant to be displayed in the middle panel. It builds it from short name of the month, ordinal representation of the day of the month and then full year. Then we have add the leading zero function that will be used to add leading zeros to single digit readings from hour, minutes and seconds. And last we have current time function which takes hours and minutes reading, makes sure that the necessary leading zeros are provided and builds the string that has hours and minutes separated by a colon. So having all these functions in place we can adjust the code we originally wrote replacing date format function and hope that this time we would not exceed the available memory quota. So first replacement is to use day of the week to display current day in the top panel. Next we use function day month year to populate information in the middle panel. Then we use current function to display time in main panel. And finally we display seconds using add leading zeros function. Let's load the sketch and see the result. Finally the OLED display works and the date and time is displayed as expected. Going back to our memory problem, the code we wrote failed as we exhausted available SRAM of the Arduino board. This would fail on Arduino Nano and Arduino Uno as well as on most other Arduino boards as they all have just 2 kilobytes of SRAM. The only board that I know this sketch would work on is Arduino Mega as this board has 8 kilobytes of SRAM. Do you know any other Arduino compatible boards that could be used? If you do, please let me know in the comment section below. Let's now quickly connect RTC and OLED modules to Arduino Mega to see if the original sketch using date format function would work. The I2C pins are digital pins 21 and 22. It works. DS3231 also has a built-in temperature sensor. The temperature registers are updated after every 64 seconds conversion. If you want a force temperature conversion, use force conversion function. This command would output temperature reading into serial monitor.
To add the current temperature to the OLED display, we add following block to our code. Looks great! With this, we have reached the end of this video. Hope you'd like it and what's more important, you'd find it useful when working on your future clock projects. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you have not yet done so. Also ring the bell to get notified about my future videos. I will see you next time.